90.7 FM, WTCC, DJ Stress, Lex Boom, the Fire Set Radio Show on the telephone with who? Royce the 5'9", a.k.a. What's up, Royce, man? How you doing? I'm doing real good, man. I'm doing real good. I'm actually in the lab right now. I'm just finished, you know, the finish. I'm just the final touches on my Street Hop album. Oh, you know I'm, 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 I'm very much behind the eight ball right now, but you know you're my man, so I had to... I had to call in, call in and see what was good with you. You good? I appreciate that. You know I appreciate it. You know I'm going to need some copies of that, uh, some singles or some songs or some something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got you. I got you. That's coming very soon. You you in Detroit right now? Yeah, I'm in the D. I'm in the D until Thursday. I actually got a show in Denver on Thursday, so I'm just trying to get things done because once I get on the road, I'm actually on the road until September. So. With, the, with your own or with the Slaughterhouse? With the Slaughterhouse. We're still on the Rock the Bell tour. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Um, rest in peace to, to um, how you say it, Barton? Barton? Barton. Barton, yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. Slum Village, definitely rest in peace for that. Let me put the music down for a second. Appreciate that. For real, Detroit. All right, man. Do you know what happened to him? I don't even hear what happened. You know what? It's actually still in the air. It's a few stories floating around, but everything happened while we was on the road. You know, um... Even L and three, they still don't know. I mean, they may have found something out since the last time I seen them, which was yesterday, but I haven't actually spoke. You know, I know he had a lot of stuff going on. I know nobody did nothing to him. I think it was just his health. You know, he had, like, health conditions, which had him in and out of the group. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know yet. That, that, that's real, real crazy. Let me let me take you back to the beginning. What what was the What was the first track that you ever did? The first track that I ever did? Yeah, the first track that Royce the Fire Nine was ever on that was out there. Um, it had to be the Eminem joint, um, Bad Me's Evil. I was the only artist to appear on Eminem's first album, Slim Shady LP. You know, that was a blessing. That was kind of like my introduction to the game. I, that's the first joint that people actually heard, you know, from me. That was people's first time hearing me. So, yeah, definitely a joint called Bad Me's Evil on Slim Shady LP. That's what's up. Do you you and Eminem still speak today? Or? You know what? I haven't in a minute, but um, we're supposed to speak real soon. Some other stuff, you know, we got going on. But um, yeah, me and him is good, man. You know, we everybody know we had our little problems, but you know, we patched that up. You know, especially for the sake of the city, for the sake of our friendship. And you know, we just all the leaders in the D just decided, man, we're gonna take a leadership vote. Um, we're gonna unify. We're gonna have a unified front. You know, anybody go against. One of the one of the people from the alliance, and we are forced to go against you. You know, that's pretty much what the situation is. So nobody is against anybody in Detroit. So basically, back way before that, y'all was friends, and before y'all even was anybody in the industry, right? Yeah, I mean, we started out, man. Like before, before he got his deal, man, it was like it was a mutual respect because he was making noise on the east side, and I was making noise on the west side. So we kind of met each other, knowing who each other was already. And we just instantly click, you know. We start sitting on the phone, you know, with the type of students of the sport. We could sit on the phone each hour, each other for hours, just talking about rap. You know what I'm saying? Talking yeah. about MCs, who's doing what. Like, we sit on the phone for hours, we even be rhyming for each other. You know, and that, that led to us doing music. And it was just like, you know, it's a hip hop relationship, but that's tough. So, you yeah. know, we, we, natu- we naturally click that way. Yeah, you're both just beasts on the mic. That's crazy. But, I mean, you got your, you said you're working on your joint. Who you got for production on your new joint? Well, I got DJ Premier executive producer now. Oh wow! I got a, I got Street Runner out of Miami. I got Six July. Um, I got Knox. Um, I got a cat named Frequency. Um, I, a frequency. I got a who am I? Who am I? Who am I forgetting? Uh, I got the Nine Porter. You know he came through in the clutch and, and dropped three bangers on me. Um. I know I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, cause I got like 19 songs on my album. Yeah, I need a copy. I just, I just can't, I just can't think right. Now. So just yeah. At that hour, when I, I start getting loose. <laughs> yeah, you said premier executive producer, right? Yeah, executive producer. Yeah. Wow, that, that's that's the combination between you two is crazy already. It's crazy, man. Wow. Yeah. So that we looking at we looking at October 20th for the official release on that one. I'm actually making a deadline now. I'm approving the last week tonight. I'm just waiting on that to come to me via email while I work on other things. But uh, yeah, October 20th, looking at. How do you how do you feel about hip hop today, man? 
about hip hop today? Yeah. Besides, I mean, this, I know the underground's good and everything, but I mean, like, if you believe there's a balance in it, uh. Now, you know, I think that's the only thing, dude. It's, it's just a balance. You know, I don't really too much complain about. I'm not one of those MCs who sit around and complain or just, you know, act like I'm so mad that everybody is not going out their way to MC or put words together. You know, like, everybody's cut for that. Everybody not here for that. This hip hop music takes on different phases. I think it's just going through a phase right now where it's lacking that balance. It's kind of oversaturated with people not trying hard to MC. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot more rappers out there that's in the, in the, in the limelight than MCs. So my problem with that is the influence it has over the younger people coming up. They're mm-hmm. not getting the opportunity to actually hear both sides. Yep, you yep. know what I'm saying? So I, I just think it needs a little balance. I don't think we need to get rid of auto tune or get rid of the soldier boys. Like, you know, it's a place for everybody. It's a place, yep, yep. It's, a, it's, a, it's a place for everybody to get their money. Like, I'm not a big Soulja Boy fan because, number one, I'm not a kid. Yeah. But you know what? You know what? When I'm in the club, I like hearing. I like hearing those songs. You know, I'm not going to ride the car and listen to it because I'm not corny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. When, I'm in, when I'm in the club and it comes on, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear Joel Ortiz putting together 50, 50 and 60 syllables, <laughs> 16, yeah. 32 bars at a, in the club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I will, I will in my car listen to Joel Ortiz all day. So it's just a time and a place for certain types of music. And I think if it was a little bit more balanced, a lot of these old people like that are just a lot more happy. I just don't think it's going the way that they thought it was going to go. You think? I went through this before. Hammer, Hammer and Vanilla Ice and all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who, 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 who does Waste of Fire now listen to besides him and his clique in his car? Well, you know what, man? Like, I'm, 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 a, I'm one of those dudes, man, that I work around the clock. Mm-hmm. Home for, I'm home for a day and a half, man, and I'm in the studio. You know, everybody, Joey's in the lab, right? He's under the pressure. Like, normally people would be at home doing the family thing, man, because we're going to be going until September, mid September. You know, so look, me being in the studio that much, I'm spending a lot of time analyzing my own music, trying to figure out how to do uh, What am I going to do with this song to change it? What am I going to do to that song? And then working on projects at a time, it's like I haven't had really, a lot of time to really listen to anybody. And two, like I just, I like to just cut the chase. You know, I can, I can one listen down everything that's going on, and I can keep open because I hear officially jaded. I'm officially listening as an artist now. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, the innocence of my ear is gone. I'm no longer a fan. So it's too for me not flaws in people's music because I'm not listening to it like the consumer no more. Yep, yep. That's... So when I'm running around, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure. I'm listening to beats. I'm trying to, trying to come up, come up with a lot of thoughts in the car. So I don't really, I don't really listen to nobody like that. That's what's up. I mean, that's what Rakim said back in the days. He don't listen. He listens to his own stuff, and that's it. This way, he don't never subconsciously sound like someone else by accident by hearing somebody else. You know what I'm saying? It, it's real easy to pick up by a lot of the cliche things that's going on now. You need to pick that up. You know what I'm saying? It's like you would, you do it if you sitting around listening, listening too much. You know, and I, I just don't think even the lyrics that I used to look up to. I don't really look up to them no more. Like, I feel like I'm on the same level as not look up to the most. I look up to the way people build their brands and build their business. Like, that's what I was free by at this point in my career because I'm, I'm kind of like stepping into the G-Ram myself. That's what's up, man. I pre- yeah, I appreciate you calling in too, man, because it's been a minute. It was good to see y'all on the Rock the Bells joint. You know what I mean? Y'all killed it on both the shows. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get to see the Rock the Bells because I was back there. You know what I'm saying? But... But seeing y'all at the New Haven, y'all killed it, man. And all that Wu Tang and Slaughterhouse is all love now, right? Oh yeah, that's, it, it's been love, man. It's been love. It's just sometimes people need to communicate. You know, when you shut off the communication, you know that that that's what can lead to problems. And when you got the real dude that's actually taking control of the situation, it can never be nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't have anything but the utmost respect for the Wu. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it's always going to be. You know, like we. We, we following their blueprint. Like, we're, we're trying to get to where they got and where they are. You know what I'm saying? And we can't do that going against them. And I think a lot of people thought that that's what we was trying to do, and it, that that's what Joey was trying to do. Or a lot of people didn't think that we was unified or that we had Joey's back. So it was just like, it took for a few conversations, and yeah, it's, it's cool. Joey and Mess talked. Those are the only two people that need to speak. Yep, exactly, yep. And it's all good. I'm happy everything is good because... 
hip hop's all we got. You know what I'm saying? And everybody together, unification is good, man. Because that that beef is no good from the past events that everybody's seen, and it's crazy. No, man, that's 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 what it is. That's what it is. Definitely. Can I um? Cause him, I could get like a 16 from you without cursing or anything. I'll turn the beat off. Oh uh, man, you know what, people? man? I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you, stress. I've been drink, I've been drinking. Like for me to give you a 16 without cursing, number one, I don't even think I got nothing in the chamber. But for me to give you a 16 without <laughs> cursing, man, I'd rather just maintain our friendship, man. Before <laughs> 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 you be like, Royce ain't no good. Ain't right. no good. I appreciate I, that. I'll catch you on the next time around, man. Like when we got one of those interviews in the daytime when it ain't after drinking now. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> Definitely, we have to, I have to get one of them answer machines in my crib so we can do it like that. Cause I'm only on the night time, you know what I mean? That's this is my show Tuesday nights, midnight to three every every week. But if you go back in the history of the of the, the hip hop shows, are all late night anyways. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's all, well listen. How about this, I got we gonna have we gonna have studio equipment on the bus. You know what I'm saying? So I can just lay something down and send it to you. Oh, that's what's I can up. Send you something official. You just gotta stay on me about that. Like after I get all the way caught up. That, that's that's no problem. Sixteen, we pump those out like we manufacture those. That that's the stuff. That's definitely why I appreciate that. So you said when Slaughterhouse coming out? Slaughterhouse is August eleventh. Street House is October twentieth. That's next week, right? Yes, we seven days out, baby. Woo! We seven days up. That's why I need to get a copy. You, you know, let me know they're going to have a clean version of it because, you know, I want to play everything. I hope they have it because I don't want to be in the studio like for 12 hours editing. And how, right, you guys it. is hip hop. You. I know you guys say what you say, and that's what it is. That's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm pretty sure E1 is on top of that, man. The whole clean thing. Um, I'm, I'm gonna see what's up, man. Like, if, if it takes for me to just have somebody go through and edit it, you know, and send it to you, you know, yeah. we can do it like that too. Yeah, that's definitely one. Or album. you just go, you just go through the album and pick the song that you like that you want to play, and you know, and I just have somebody clean it up for you and send it to you. Who's got some production on the album? On 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 the uh, slaughterhouse. Yeah, a lot of the same people. Street Runner, Denai Porter. We got the Real Focus. We got Alchemist. Um, who else am I missing? Uh, Khalil. Uh, uh who else am I missing? Emil. Okay. Emil is another producer on my album too. Okay. Um, I mean, we got a hey look, we got a we got a fire. You got features of rappers on there. We had nobody rapping verses. We got Cheryl Monch on the hook. Woo. We got we got we got Fat Man Scoop on the song. Um, we got Bum B, DJ Premier on on the skit. You know, because it's like we all of us was pretty much on every song. So in order for the songs not to be super crazy long, you know, we did the MOP. Yeah, I seen um, that. I seen that in the in the YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I was telling you know, we kept it. Like, we did the album in six days. So. The next album, Damn. the next album, we gonna make, we gonna make. For, for those that don't think this album is a class, we definitely gonna make the next one because we have a lot more time. You know, we gonna be more used to working with each other. We all learn those from each other, so. Yeah, you all the next told, one is definitely gonna be a certified class. Yeah, definitely differ from each other too. That's what makes it even doper. You know what I'm saying? Y'all dope. Y'all dope in your own ways, and y'all come together like Voltron. It's crazy. Yeah, but the album, is, the album is cohesive. Definitely cohesive. Have you ever felt like that someone else got you on a verse on any songs? Um, yeah, I feel like that about Crooked all the time. For real? I Crooked think everybody crazy. got they everybody got their strong points. I think with Crooked with Crooked, I think he just his strong point is coming up with those lines. You know, like he come off the top of his head with lines that I would have written down sitting on waiting to say them at the right time. You know, and it's like yeah. every everybody got their strong point. Nobody, nobody in the group really comes up with the kind of lines Crooked come up with on every song. Mm-hmm. So if you just if you just trying to judge verses, you probably gonna think Crooked is the best person. You know, but I very rarely listen to the songs and say, okay, who got the best verse? Yeah, that's because if, any, if anybody is changing the song and changing the verse, it's, it's for the betterment of the song because they feel like, okay, yeah, maybe I could have came harder, but it's not. I'm gonna change my verse because they put me on the verse because it's like, man. I can't, I can't put that stress myself trying to go in and compete with them dudes every session. <laughs> you know, everybody just got to come with their A game, and you know, one person gonna shine one day, one person gonna shine another day. That's just what it is. Who's, who's one of your inspirations that made you want to start rapping? Um, you know what, man? A lot of people. You know, Run DMC, 
Yep. Everybody from Run DMC, DOC, Rakim, Ferris One, um, the whole chronic movement, the whole West Coast movement that they had going on. You know, and everything that was going on in the East, man. Even, even Jay Z and Nas. You know, I was still a kid. I was still a kid when they first came out. I was looking up to them. They made me want to put words together. Red man, Razzcast. A lot of people. A lot of people influenced me. I might hear a Royce the Five Nine Nas song. Have you spoke to him at all on the tour? Nah, you know what, man? Nas will come pulling up. Nas will be going on at clock, man. He'll come pulling up at 9:59 in the Phantom. <laughs> Drive all the way to the stage. Jump out, go perform, <laughs> jump back in and be out. Yeah, that's like KRS, right, maybe in and out, yep. Yeah, and Nas just keep it real, real professional. You, you, you do his thing like a machine, so you're not going to see Nas really just walking around, walking yeah. around the premises like that. So, no, I ain't even, I ain't even really seen Nas aside from just speaking on stage. You was the opposite, though. Everybody see you want some, some regular, regular person. You ain't on that Hollywood. Most of the times I spoke to you, you was on some real, real person type, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not even saying that he was, that he on some Hollywood, you know No, 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 I'm just saying, you know, as, as you walking around as a person, if I didn't know who you was, I wouldn't even knew. I'd be like, oh, this is just a person that raps, so, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 no, I just, I just, you know, I just move around like I used to move around the deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I move around everywhere like that, pretty much. Did you know, you I just, I just, I keep it how I keep it. It's, it's not even like an on-purpose thing, it's just, you know, I just move around the way that I'm comfortable. You know what I'm saying? If it gets to the point where it's like I can't take steps without people bobbing me, or if I'm like on Eminem, then yeah, I, I'll probably have to switch up the way that I move around. Like, yeah. guys wouldn't be able to move around the venue like that. Yep, I know exactly what you're saying, because people would just not leave you alone. I know yeah, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't they wouldn't give them a, a, a second breeze. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your studio, and I appreciate you calling in. You know when you drop your joint, I want to do another interview, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I got you, man. I got you. As soon as I, as soon as I get that done and that thing was ready to go out, you're gonna be one of the ones to get it. Thanks, bro. I'm gonna get at you tomorrow. I'll give you, you gonna be free tomorrow. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be ch- chilling at the crib. All right, I appreciate the call, man. All right, my man, my man, for sure. All right, peace. All right.